Eric Shaver, D.O., coming to you with yet another health update. And for the third time this week, I find myself talking about vaccine policy. Not a topic I want to focus on so exclusively, but it just can't seem to stay out of the news. For those of you who didn't notice, this past Friday, the Centers for Disease Control's Vaccine Policy Council made a new recommendation to no longer universally vaccinate children born in the United States for the hepatitis B virus. The new recommendation is for universal vaccination of children born to mothers who test positive for the hepatitis B service antigen during pregnancy and to have a shared decision-making process between providers and the expectant mother as to whether or not they want their child vaccinated. I do believe this is a mistake. The current policy of universal vaccination has been shown to eliminate 18,000 hepatitis B infections annually. And we're going to start missing some of those with this new policy. It's almost a guarantee. And we need to understand exactly how the hepatitis B vaccine is transmitted in order to understand this. Yes, it is frequently a sexually transmitted illness, but being an STI is not the only way it's transmitted. What we saw of those 18,000 cases that we're preventing, 9,000 of them were through vertical transmission of an infected mother to an infected to a child. The remaining 9,000 infections occurred during early childhood exposure to a close contact of some kind who has the virus. Because the virus can be transmitted on implements like toothbrushes and razors, there is a potential for a child to become infected during early childhood without any sort of STI type direct exposure. As such, I think we're missing the boat here and we are going to inevitably see a rise in hepatitis B cases in childhood, very similar to the rise we've seen in measles and pertussis here recently. And this is very unfortunate because becoming infected in early childhood is a far greater risk of developing chronic liver disease, cancer, and other very expensive to treat problems. Yes, we have antivirals that can treat this illness, but the cost of doing so is far greater than the cost of vaccinating. All right, guys. Hope this helps, and I'll talk to you again next time.